you've probably seen the title of this video and realized who the heck is gonna pay 60,000 or even more for a website? And in this video, I'm gonna try to go through the process of why would somebody pay way more than 50,000 for a website? So in our process of becoming kind of one of the leading Webflow enterprise partners uh, kind of in Europe and maybe even like uh, across the world, we work with really, really, really big websites. And like from that experience, my whole idea of how much a website should cost completely shifted. And like even like with all of the courses you might be seeing online, okay, make 10K per website, make, I don't know, 50K per website. That's the bottom line. That's even not a lot for a website. I mean, kind of the first thing you need to realize is the world we live in more and more businesses are not having offices are not having a physical space you can correlate their brand to on like an experience you're gonna get so that's why more and more businesses are spending a lot of money to start to create their online experience to replicate their brand to differentiate from all, all the other competitors online and that's why a website can cost like 50k 100k 1 million or even more than that just because of all the things it requires in order to do so. Just imagine like a big enterprise or whatever competing with all, all of the other enterprises. They want to differentiate themselves like from like on every single touch point. Okay, they're gonna do a rebrand, they're gonna do a custom like advertising campaign, they're gonna do many other different things, but in the end, all of the money they're spending it in on every single touch point with a client, all of the money is gonna pour into the website. Because at one point on the other, somebody's gonna have to go to the marketing website. They're gonna need to decide, am I gonna use this startup or like a SaaS tool or anything similar? And should I actually gonna continue to use their platform and pay for their services? And that's why lately you're seeing companies like even MailChimp or whatever, doing rebrands more and more and like new versions of the website, maybe even yearly. Because it seems that it's expected that like how their brand evolves, that's how the, their marketing website is gonna be evolving with time. And that's adjusting uh, for their brand values, adjusting for their new service offerings and making sure that it converts as expected. I'm gonna try to outline all the possible inputs that might come into a marketing website. So first of all, there's gonna be, let's say, maybe like a CEO involved as a main, like as the latest decision maker. Then there's gonna be like a VP of marketing. Then he's gonna start involving, involving a VP of sales. He's gonna start involving um, a VP of engineering, maybe to remove the engineering constraints from the dev team. Like if they transition to Webflow, like their development team is not gonna be working on that. Then afterwards, let's say, they contract an agency like ours uh we're gonna have like maybe somebody like me involved in some of the bigger projects we're gonna have a biz dev manager making sure that the whole process is taken care of and that they actually understand client is taken care of through the whole process uh we're gonna need to have a copywriter that's gonna be writing the copy maybe from our side maybe from their side we're gonna need to have somebody from their side explaining the brand and everything behind the brand maybe like more salespeople, not just the vp of sales like but more salespeople being involved and every single one of them is gonna have their own objectives for the website uh then like we're gonna have designers developers jazz developers maybe even some devops people added to the project in order to make sure that it's a success then coming to all of those together like uh, like even talking to hr like the hr team is gonna have its own mission for the website the sales team is gonna have its own mission the brand team is gonna have its own mission combining all of that into a new website adding all of those goals uh, kind of properly executing on them through like uh, a proper website structure a proper website design development and then also the growing needs of users for accessibility to be uh, 2.1 or 2.2 compliant with accessibility with gdpr like if in europe there's going to be more time and more resources needed in order to be gdpr compliant um, uh, with a bigger website for a business like that and that's why the costs can just add and add and add and add and like as more and more people are spending more time online and like they're scared about their security privacy and more things like that there's gonna need to be like a lot more i would say carefulness when developing a website and much more steps that cannot be missed and that's why i feel like starting at 50k is like maybe even a mid-size uh, website project and that they can go up to like uh, abnormal amounts of money just because that is actually going to be giving the most amount of return on investment for the client so no matter how much money like a business actually spends like because it's going to be the first thing people see nowadays because you don't have anywhere else to showcase your brand it's going to return like 5 10 20 30 or like maybe even more acts afterwards just because of that small investment in the end when you look. So I would love to hear what's maybe like the, the, the most expensive website you've ever done, or when you heard that some company paid some amount of money for the maintenance or even like for development of the website down below that you were like, 
oh wow, I, I never expected that that's gonna cost that much.